Hello everyone, I'm going to tie to, for you today um, a couple of protagons. Um, first, the way I was taught uh, on a standard wet fly hook, uh, 2x strong, and I run uh, the Hens BL200 size 14s. Um, this certainly works well, it's more the traditional way, and then I'll show you how, you to, how to tie the same pattern on a jig hook, which will be the Hens BL124. And we over, oversize beads on these particular patterns. So keep in mind when you're tying them, uh, the idea of the Pertagon, which came out of the Pyrenees Mountains between Spain and France, were utilized uh, on very large wild brown trout in very difficult situations. The water is absolutely gin clear. It's uh, fairly shallow. It's it, it it has very very flowing rate flow rates anywhere from fairly fast to moderate to even slower speed areas. So this is where we adjust our bead size. But in general, on this size uh, 14, what I'm running for a bead is uh, the hens, um, silver beads in this case. It's just a tungsten bead. And this was a 3.3 uh, size. <coughs> So to secure it, generally the pattern was tied with a taper going back into a tail and there wasn't much to it. The whole idea was to tie it in the round. Uh, in a lot of cases people will put a wing case on top after they've lacquered it, which certainly does work, but keep in mind when you put a wing case on, you now give a, the fly a up or a downside. And as Charles Brooks once said, that tumbling nymphs have a higher rejection rate uh, than a nymph that rides right side up. So by tying in the round, you create a collar just behind the bead uh, so that no matter what angle the fly is at in the water, especially if you've lost control of the fly, then um, it doesn't have a, a, a designated up or a down side. So I'll just start with this pattern here. And what I like to do is take a little bit of Bondix and just fill the hole to secure the bead. Now, it's not something that was normally done. <coughs> but I do it just to maintain a position in the bead and also uh, it allows me, when I'm tying, to maintain a very narrow profile on the body itself and I don't have to build up a bigger heavier taper to the bead size to, to center the bead. So by doing it this way I have the option of either building up the heavier bodies which would have the same taper behind the bead it would be the bead, bead width, bead depth or I can run a narrower body if I choose to. So I just start with a a little bit of wax my my thread I'm running 18 aught nano silk um, these new 18 aught threads that are in the market today are absolutely stunning uh, you don't have to feel intimidated <coughs> to use a small narrower thread uh, that's kind of a thing of the past with the old types of threads and materials these new ones here uh, these new synthetics space age synthetics are super strong and actually I can bend this hook with this 18 knot thread uh, or even break it before I'll even bust the thread but uh, so what we're running for a feather here is a Coq de Leon uh, it's generally used over hackles because it is stiffer and it has the Pardo style um, has speckling in the in the fibers so the idea is to not have these small hackles break on you uh, when they're on as a tail and I guess that does apply so I'll just add in the tail we'll adjust it to length we don't want a long tail we want a, something that's at least just body length and I'll just come up in behind the bead with my thread <coughs> securing all the tail fibers in place and now I'll 
this is where my tying technique changes on these patterns is now I'll just tie in and tie off behind the bead with the thread. I'll have a, a couple of different spools mounted. Uh, so on this particular pattern uh, I want to incorporate a small tag so I'm just going to run some of the the hands body buzzer body. Uh, that's the original material. Since then they've come up with buzzer wrap and who knows what else. But uh, again keep your keep your material flat and I just build that up to right behind the tail. Just back off turn, take another wrap forward. And then I bring that forward again, taking the twists out of the main material. And then wet finish this off as well. Now, what I'll do is I'll add the main body material. And in this case, it is uh, the Zemperfly Micro Glint uh, in yellow. And I'll start that behind the bead again as well, as we do with any of the other material. We'll cut off the tag end. Pursue down. So we have about two or three wraps of the tag showing. No, you don't need a lot. Um, I think sometimes we sort of overdo it on tags, make them a bit too large. All we want to do is attract the fish to the hot spot um, and not spook them off. So, and come in behind the bead again. Can finish off right here. Just leave it the way it is. Uh, just whip finish it off, and then and then coat the material, coat the body with uh, head cement or UV resin, and that would be a completed pertagon. But like I said, I want to tighten around. A lot of people are putting wing cases now. They would put a wing case on top, and that again would give the fly pattern an up or a down position and um, for myself uh, I prefer trying to stay in the round so what I'll do is I'll just add in a small dark colored wing case and I'm using here now the, the Hens Pertagon body uh, material in this case it's a darker purple it's 1 ninth inch in size and now I can just finish off again keeping everything flat and that would be a finished Pertagon uh, in the, the fashion that I tie them Again, now we can head cement this. I like using a little bit of gravity to my advantage, so I'll start at the back of the fly with a very thin head cement. And as you can see, as soon as I applied the head cement, the pattern went fairly translucent, which is uh, sort of a key factor in tying these things. Uh, translucency really plays a big part in these patterns. So that's uh, the first Pertagon and uh, the basic style that you can that you can tie and use and I'll just move that over and then we'll do a jig style. Same pattern. All we've done is change the hook style, add it on a slotted bead and this is this particular case it's like, again a size 14 hook size 14 and I'm utilizing a copper bead on this particular pattern because um, I enjoy a lot of copper especially on the water that's been fished heavily 
fish react to a little change and the copper seems to be a, one of the changes that they'll react very well to. In this case it's a 3.8 millimeter small slot bead from Hens and I like the small slots because I can oversize the bead to the smaller jig hooks. And again I'll fill the back end of the slot once the the head's in position so it doesn't mess move around on me as I'm tying the fly. I mean, I've seen people fill this with tungsten paste, um, uh, lead, just heat up lead and, and lay it in there, and that all works. It's all great um, for me. I just it's, I'm not worried about adding extra weight to the pattern. Um, I I just try to have something that's functional and that's why I use the UV resin. So again we're going to start with a thread behind the bead head, touching turns moving down the body. Again we'll add some cock de Leon tail fibers, three to five. Um, don't put in too many tail fibers. I want to keep again, like I had mentioned again, this is a very sparse pattern. And now we'll just finish this off the whip finish behind the head, secures the thread, the tail, and now we'll run <coughs> the Pertagon buzzer body and the fluorescent orange. We'll start that behind the head as well. Tag, build our first layer. Again, keeping everything flat by untwisting it. And here we'll lay in a wet finish. Zemperfly micro, uh, nymph glint, micro glint. Start at that in behind the bead head. Again, touching turns, moving down the body. Again, as I'd mentioned, keep the, keep the tag small. It doesn't have to be large. You just need to maybe keep two or three wraps exposed. And here, if you wish, you can certainly build a layer or two of the body material. Again, keeping a fine taper to it. And we'll finish this off behind the head. Leave the pattern as is um, and head cement it, or like I had mentioned before, staying in, in the round. I like to just add a small collar, whether with it, <clears throat> whether it's the this body buzzer material or buzzer body material from Hens. You can certainly also put a thread back on and run small bits of dubbing, whether it's Harris mask or opossum or squirrel, uh, the, the hen spectra flashes or make a great addition here as well. It's a type of synthetic dubbing. And again, 
to remove that and then we'll head cement the whole pattern with a few coats. Again, watch watch the material that should go translucent, the yellow. And it has just a beautiful effect. So I tie these in blacks, reds, pinks, uh, rainbow colors, rainbow red, rainbow black. Um, there's a host, just even UTC thread, uh, if I want something more in a natural color in the olives or browns. Uh, there, there's, there's a hundred different ways of tying this by changing material. The tying technique or procedure for myself doesn't change for the most part. This is pretty much how I have a tendency to tie them all the time. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that and hope you got something out of it. Um, thanks for watching and uh, have, have a great day.